You are watching the Big Dog Post Game Show, brought to you by Viner Forgates and the Big Dog himself, Rick Jacklich at the Jacklich Law Group. It was a good afternoon in Lincoln, Nebraska. Maryland becomes bowl eligible, 13 to 10. Finally get that drive from Leah with the game on the line, kicks the field goal from Jack Howes, and Maryland uh, superbly happy with being bowl eligible. I'm Wayne Viner. That's Mason. Mason, what'd you see out there? Yeah, it wasn't pretty um, by any stretch of the word, but he got it done, and that's something that I think a lot of uh, people that have watched this team, watched this program, have been looking for is the bounce back on the road. And look, an accomplishment that I have to say is how many people in Maryland joined the Big Ten thought they would win in Lincoln, Nebraska. That was one of the places that was, you know, sketched out as impossible to win in. Got it done, win number six in the books, and now on to big noon kickoff with a great football team coming into CQ uh, next week. It's Michigan, and then closing out the season at Rutgers, and it makes Maryland bowl eligible, so we'll skip to the end of the story, which is bowl eligible, and it looks like there'll be a game on December 26th. Maybe it's in Phoenix, maybe it's in Detroit, maybe it's in Birmingham, but Maryland's going to be making the trip somewhere, and yeah, I know... I picked them eight wins. Mason, you picked nine wins. But really, for a Maryland football fan from the past 20 some odd years, to say that you're going to third bowl game in a row, something that has not happened since the Freegian era, it might not be the season you wanted, but my goodness, three bowls in a row is some progress. It is um, not really what you know anybody wanted to see. And, and look, I'll take Loxley's view on it. It's a little early uh, to be talking about that. Yeah, it's an accomplishment. It's it's a, and again, another box to check for uh, the program uh, when you look to recruiting. But really, over the next two weeks, you hope to find at least one more win, hopefully a competitive game next weekend. It's going to be a really, really tough challenge against a great football team, like I already said. Uh, but today, I mean, the credit goes to the quarterback. Obviously, the game was on his shoulders. Fumbles from Roman Hemby, Ty Felton. Uh, a lot of times where he could have crumbled, uh, like we've seen in the past, but look, you've battled through adversity. We've been one of, the, I think, the few outlets that, you know, it said sometimes he's not giving them enough to win. This Today he did. He won them this game. Uh, he put together the drive at the end of uh, regulation there. And look, again, props to defense, props to, pr props to Brian Williams for getting him back working. Nebraska gave him a lot of gifts, but look, we haven't been quite able to take them this year. That was a step in the right direction. Not something that I'm sure they're going to love to watch the tape of, but Hey, wins are wins. We've lost some games. We felt like we should win this year. Probably stole one today on the road. And with that, we'll get this word from Rick Jacklich and, of course, from Viner Forgates. We'll be back in a moment on the Big Dog Postscape Show. Since 1991, Viner Forgates has completed thousands of projects across the D.C. metro area and around the globe. Use Viner Forgates for your next IT project. The biggest difference in a truck accident versus a car crash is the investigation that the lawyer has to do right from the beginning of the case. Number one is obtaining the log books of the driver to show that the driver was not rested properly according to federal law. Uh, investigating through the black box and getting an expert to figure out from the black box of the truck the speed of the truck or where the truck had been. So it's just different type of handling. Usually you have catastrophic injuries involved with tractor trailers as well. You have a massive, heavy vehicle that strikes a much smaller vehicle. You're going to have more massive injuries. So it's a different ball game. And if people are injured in a truck crash, they really, really need to find a lawyer that knows what he's doing with truck crashes. So one other note, this helmet, this one's back from the ACC days, makes its way back. I thought the uniforms looked great. I know this isn't about the uniforms. It's about winning a football game, but I really liked the white uniforms. Uh, they look good on TV, and they look even better when you win. So about this game, Maryland at the end finally finds a running game. Hemby, effective. I know he fumbled at the five, and, and the, these turnovers have to stop. Leah ends up being the second leading rusher. I think he had 38 yards and not much from anybody else. Jay Sean Jones, when he plays like he does did today, statistically, Maryland's 11 and one when he gets the four or five catches when he's a leading receiver. That catch from Prather early in the game was spectacular. But overall, 
the offense just can't get it going. Do, do you have some keys to why? Yeah, I think it's a rhythm offense. It always has been uh, as long as Locks' system's been in place. And Josh Gaddis even amplifies that just uh, with how long those two have worked together. Um, they, I think the check with me offense or the check with the silent offense with the quarterback that this much experience he knows a rhythm guy probably needs to uh, be a little bit adjusted. That's something you can do week to week, put in some no huddle just to find some rhythm. Uh, on the running game, Again, just getting up field, getting your pad level right and just trying to push forward and eating the fact that you're going to be running the ball for a lot of one, two, and three yard gains. Uh, it's just got to get through to these guys. They're really, they love the explosive plays. They love those moments in the games. But ultimately, we're just not there as an offensive line unit. And, and that's one of the things that, that needs to change. Another thing worth mentioning today, the negative side, the penalties return for what seems like now a third straight game, I would say. Loxley really had it cleaned up. And hopefully a win will help the the mental uh, aspect of this football team get back to the standard, get back to uh, where they were committed to at the beginning of the season as far as just improving th their ability to not get in their, their own way of winning the football game. Um, again, next week you're going to have to play a really clean game if you even want a chance. And the thing you got to do is keep it low scoring, you know, not make mistakes and, and, and force, you know, five turnovers like you did today. And that might put you where you want to be. Four interceptions. Look, Maryland had five chances at getting interception. They caught the ball all five times. One of them came back. That was Trader. Uh, there was a penalty on the play. It was a hold on Wyatt early in the game. It, it's unusual that every time the ball hit the Maryland defenders in the hands, Maryland caught it. So props to still Trader. Good game. I like what Maryland did on the defensive line. They they shifted it up again. They had Colbert, and Mason's brought up Trey Colbert before, along with Phillips along with, I guess, Taisha Johnson played a lot. Tommy Akingbasote looked like he hurt his knee. I don't think he came back in. Overall, defensively, they did what they had to do, and you knew Nebraska was going to run the ball, and Maryland actually stood up and, and for the most part, stopped them. If it wasn't for the offensive turnovers, that defense was on pace for a shutout. Yeah, I mean, really solid rotation through, and, and I think we saw a couple of things we've been looking for Throughout the season, one of which is Caleb Wheatland's move to the Jack linebacker position along with Donnell Brown really seals that up. Uh, Riyad Wilmot, who has really done well against the run this year, really lacking as a pass rusher at this point. But again, knowing your personnel strengths is uh, where this coaching staff is supposed to be able to uh, succeed in terms of staff, in terms of scouting and going forward. So he was back out there really good to see. But ultimately, meaningful plays with the right guys on the field. Donnell Brown, Jay Sean Barham, obviously the ones you're looking for. Gote is right there. You just you can't hurt your team the way that they, they did sometimes after the whistle today. Mm -hmm. um, continue to focus on those things and, you know, move forward. But a win's a win. Win number six. Uh, mm -hmm. Six and four at this point. Not where many people thought they would be or where we wanted to be. But it's where we are. It's a happy day. Cause and we'll take it. We won. We walk won. off wins. I mean, we don't get many of those. We, we no. haven't had many game-winning kicks around here. So worth celebrating uh, when we have them. It is. A and we will. And that even covers up some of the disappointment from basketball from last night. And with that, we will wrap it up. Thanks for watching. We will see you after the Michigan game. And, of course, you can catch Mason and Ahmed on Inside the Black and Gold with, with their show. Good evening from the Viner Four Gate Studio.